for this build, I want to turn this dump truck into an RC. So this model is from Greenlight. The back gate, it does rotate. And we do, uh, the bed does rotate up and down. Let's remove all the screws from underneath. So the cab came off pretty easy. Now with all the components separated, uh, I usually like to take the chassis and basically make measurements with my caliper here. And so what I'll do is I'll uh, take measurements of the length and the width. I'll go into Fusion 360 and start to model uh, a new chassis for the cab and for the uh, dump here. Now with all the parts disassembled, the uh, most difficult po uh, portion was to design a new chassis. And so this is basically what I wanted to go with, um, looking something like this. So we do a test fit onto the cab itself. It sits to where um, I could actually use a screw uh, to screw this the chassis back in. And not only that, I'm able to uh, put this body here. Okay, so after a few redesign and a few reprints, I think this is going to be the final chassis. And this piece here is a piece to hold the uh, drive motor. Now I will need to uh, shoot a black paint over it. So I'll take that out to the garage. Okay, let's put the uh, tilting mechanism together. Now this is something that I designed and 3D printed. It's basically just a spur, spur gear cut in half to where I could basically super glue this uh, brass rod or square tube on. Now this part right here will sit like so and this round round rod will go in here in this hole here and I'll feed it through onto the other side and we will have the motor sit in this pocket here just like that and when everything is assembled together hopefully if it works properly it should be able to tilt this uh, body here. Now it's time to feed the motor in. So for me to secure the motor, I normally just put a bead of hot glue. I really have no other idea of how to secure this unless I design some crazy bracket to uh, go over it. But this has been working and it's been holding up pretty well. So I'll just put a bead of glue around the uh, surface, contact surface here. So it won't pull out on me. Now we can test it with the battery to see if it's functional. Now we can change the polarity and make it go in reverse. Assemble the front motor, the drive motor. Well, this is the only drive motor that we'll have. And I basically used the same axle from uh, that came with the car. 
because it's basically the perfect width for what I've designed previously. And these bevel gears I designed in Fusion 360 using a program. And it came out pretty good. It's just the fact that the I wanted these gears to actually be smaller, but um, I printed the smaller gears and the, the, the teeth were not strong enough. The teeth were breaking. So I just scaled it up just a little bit so I was able to print these out. Now, the motor will go in here like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll leave it here for it to cure and then we can uh, start working on it again. For this assembly to hold the motor in, we'll have to put a bead of hot glue again. Now, the only issue with this is we don't want the hot glue to get in there to uh, freeze up the gear. So I'll just put a, a small bead of hot glue on the outside. Now I can test to see if the motor will turn without any resistance. That looks pretty good. Going that side. Now let's switch the polarity. This side looks good as well. We can call that good now. Now let's put on the wheels. Put a little bit of super glue at the tip here and hopefully it will hold the wheels together. We can do another test run to see how well the, the motor works. Now this is the front assembly and I will put this together and put the wheels on. Now it's time to assemble the rear uh, wheels using the same axle it came with. And this is basically a, a spacer, I call it. And it will go at the very uh, end of the chassis. Now I'll do a test fit like this. And then what I'll do is I'll go back and super glue the ends together. And so this guy will actually be super glued right here to be the very back of the wheels. Now this part will be a little tricky because I basically want everything to be super glued on and I I don't want it to be uh, misaligned or anything. So front wheels to the drive motor to the back wheels and I have these little ones for basically the wheels in the middle here. I will super glue these on, making sure it doesn't interfere with any moving parts. And uh, hopefully everything will align correctly. Now, I, I don't want to put a lot of super glue because I might need to remove it again. And I'm hoping that's good enough. I was trying to align this housing along with this, the frame here. Now for the wheels in the back here, I haven't really, um, I didn't really design it to for it to be the same width as the uh, frame here. So it's going to be a little tricky to try to get it to align. Right in this area here, I'm hoping that it won't interfere with the uh, little spacer there. Now what I'm trying to do is just try to center this, center this in between these two wheels. Not quite where I want it, but we'll, we'll live for now. That this will do for now. One reason why I like these die casts from Greenlight is they normally have the uh, 
holes for the headlights. The lens will have a small plastic piece that protrudes out here. And so when I'm using uh, LED lights, I don't need to drill holes. Okay, and the front lights are in place now. I actually had to drill the uh, hole through the uh, lens, the plastic lens here, because it uh, was just too blurry. And not only that, it blocked off a lot of light. So I had to drill the holes through, feed the lights through, and hot glue them in place under the uh, fender wheel here. Now we have to do the same for the backlights. I'm basically using the same uh, mud flaps here along with the tail lights, and I'll just feed the lights through here, and hopefully I can get it to a place where it it won't um, interfere with the uh, bed here. Now I'm going to try to feed the rotating servo in and put in the uh, arm. Now it's time to put in the charging port and the on and off switch. And again, I like to put a bead of super glue around it just so it won't come off. But it will be easily removed if I ever need to take them out. Now I can put the cab on. And usually I just like to test fit it. Because there is a lot of components here. Now we can put in this screw to screw down the cab. Now this is how it's going to be and I I look like it looks like the, the body is a little crooked because of the way it's mounted. Now to put back the side mirrors and the gas tank I'll just use a small drop of super glue. For some reason the dump body looks a little crooked and it doesn't look like it's aligned with the cab. I think that might be, I'm not sure what it is, but it's definitely got to have something to do with the chassis. This is just a handful of rocks and I'll see how much weight it could take. The green light wheels are not the best. And these wheels are very wobbly. I, sh I should have switched them out to uh, some of the Hot Wheels uh, rubber wheels, but since these wheels came with the car or this truck, I just kept it. But they are very wobbly.
Now, overall, the build was okay. I think the, the chassis is kind of lopsided for whatever reason. And the wheels are not uh, properly round. See how it's all lopsided and it doesn't spin correctly. And so I think next time around, I'll use some other wheels. But for now, I think it's okay and it functions how I wanted it.